for you. We have some stuff for you in tech, though. We have the new AMD chip releases. We're going to chat about that. We have the new iPhone releases, which I'm very excited about. And then in the camera world, we actually have a new Panasonic box mod that has been released. The BGH1. We're going to chat about that. What do we got in gaming? I, well, I played some Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 3. We have some gaming news. Doobie, do you have any gaming news for us today? Uh, the only thing is I can think of, uh, I haven't had a chance to, I mean, I just got home not that long ago, but uh, Minecraft Steve, I think, came out today, right? Or is it coming out today? Minecraft Steve? So, oh, right, um, yeah, the 13th, right? If you doubt, I think, yeah, today's the 13th. I think it's supposed to come out today. So I have to still download that um, some point and try him out. But I still haven't even played Min Min, so... I haven't oh. touched Smash Ultimate in, like, months at this point. I've been playing nothing but Melee. Yeah. Um, and then as far as that, uh, I think there's a PlayStation 5 UI announcement with Burger King on the 15th. Don't know why Burger King is a thing with it. Apparently they're doing a giveaway for a PS5, which at this point might be your best bet to even get one. Are we getting a new... Remember that series they did with the Xbox 360 of really shitty games? Yo, bring back the King games? Oh, God. Hey, your Xbox uh, Series X can play those. Because back to Annabelle, you don't want to play the King at 4K 60? Hey, man, Burger King, they they got some pretty good marketing. I like their marketing better than, like, McDonald's marketing. Yo, you don't want to see that Travis Scott meal? You know, the Sprite, the... (laughs) He does it. He hey, he dunks them fries into barbecue sauce. No, I'm good. Yeah, on that. Anytime like, you load up a Twitch stream, that's all you see is that ad. No, I'm I mean, good on that. I mean, let's be real though. Like, I don't think either. Well, at least in, in McDonald's case, I don't think they give a shit about marketing because are, are you going to really go to Burger King over McDonald's? No, probably not. Probably not. Yeah, that's the thing too. But to be like, fair, I'm not going to lie. I I haven't had Burger King in a long time. I, with the exception of the Big Mac. I think I prefer the Whopper over, over like a like quarter a pounder, quarter pounder with cheese. I'll go uh, big Mac. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean you, your fries aren't as good, but good. that's why you get the onion ring. Wait, you said you Fair, mean you okay. go Whopper over quarter pounder is what you're saying, right? I would, yeah. I don't know. If you were to give me a, if you give me the Big uh, Mac, I'm going Big Mac. I'm we're talking food again. <laughs> before before they started making them fresh, I would agree with you, but once. McDonald's finally wisened up and realized, yeah, they should just make them when you order them. No, I'm going quarter pounder all day. Yeah, there's something about McDonald's fresh that's just, it's hard to beat. I would do. It's just salt and pepper. It's literally, that's literally all it is. It's it's a shit ton of salt and pepper. It's fucking good, man. I will, I mean, there's not like, I, if you're in it for a quick bite, I don't think you can go wrong with either. Like a Whopper. I'll always take a Whopper. The problem is Burger King is usually always there. next to a McDonald's. Ah, I at least I, where honestly, at least around the here, the closest Burger King to me is like actually a bit of a haul. It Not is, a haul, but it's a pain in the ass to get to on seventy, where, right? Where I can tell you where three different Burger Kings are. No, thirty-eight. It's not next to a McDonald's. That one's not next to a McDonald's. That one's like by a Planet Fitness. Okay. That's over on 38. Uh, hell yeah, there we go. 38. Yeah, you work at out. 70. There's a Burger King on 70, but I don't even remember where that Burger King is. It's by McDonald's. I know it. I know it's pretty Can't by wait McDonald's. to fucking work out. There's like three different McDonald's get some on Burger 70, King. <laughs> That's the problem. It's like there's three different McDonald's I can tell you right now on Route 70. Yeah. I mean, there's McDonald's everywhere. It's the best. And then there's one on 73. All right, enough of the fast food. We talked about fast food last was it last week or the week before? A couple weeks ago. We we will get it, eventually get back to a fast food ranking. Well, yeah, we need to. But well, what was the other rank we were gonna do? Like like chain restaurants? Was that the one? Yeah, because we did oh, yeah. we did chain burgers, but we didn't do chain restaurants. Where, and I will just putting? point. I will point out for all of this talk about how great the Whopper is. We never once mentioned Burger King that entire episode. Yeah. We didn't. We didn't. But I don't really like the Whopper. I mean, I don't hate the Whopper. I just don't. I. It's kind of. I'm not going out of my way to a Burger King to get a Whopper. Right. Exactly. If it's on the way, and I'm like, listen, I need something in my stomach. Oh, there's Burger King right there. Okay, I'll stop and get a Whopper. But I'm not I mean, going I out of my way and getting in my car going. You know what I want? I'm going to go right now to Burger King. Yeah, I would agree. Dude, I've that. I've worked at both of them. They both suck. <clears throat> oh yeah. I, I'm going to choose McDonald's more more often than not though because like, it's a little less grody. 
See, what's, what's, I, I've never worked fast food. I kind of am happy that I didn't because I don't have the behind, I don't, I haven't taken a peek behind the curtain. Uh, never, do ever, you, just don't bother buying anything that's a franchise. That's do you all consider yeah. Wawa to be fast food? No, it's not fast food. It's a deli. I mean, they have some. I mean, they they have more than just sandwiches, though. Yeah, but, yeah, but, um, I guess it is, but I wouldn't consider it fast food because it's, it's kind of just like microwave. It's just, it's like a gas station, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, I've worked there, so I know exactly what happens there. <laughs> it's a gas station where they just literally it's have a good microwave. It's a convenience microwave. store, but yeah. so is Sheets, and so is Royal Farms, and so is... Like, and I wouldn't uh, consider any of them fast food. But to be fair, like a, a Wawa type situation was what was going to be my joke of that's the only time I'll go to Burger King. Is if I'm traveling cross and country you, and I need gas and that's the only thing there. I mean, everything at Wawa pretty much comes in like nothing comes in fresh. Yeah, everything comes in in like the deli stuff is is not. It, there used to be a time where it was pre sliced. Like it would actually, we would actually take the meat out of the like the cooler, put it on a slicing rack, and slice it. That's but also something you'll all, never find in a subway. Yeah, now it all just comes in pre-packaged, ready to go, and then all of the hot stuff, the, the turkey, the mashed potatoes, the, the mac and cheese, it's all just giant bags of frozen stuff you put into a hot, into this giant thing that's filled with hot water. It's no, no one remember that commercial? The fucking Arby's oven mitt of just like, yeah, dude, yeah. this is a slicer. You'll never find one of these in a subway. <laughs> Which I got lucky. I never cut true. my hand on a slicer, but I knew some people who did. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, no it sucks. Scary. I tell you what, I've been eating though. Like fucking, them and mandolins. Yeah, I know. I've been eating. Cut straight to the bone. Tons of deli sliced prosciutto. Dude, uh, it's not as good as like prosciutto that's like packaged from wherever they package it from, but it's cheaper and you get a lot more of it. And it's, I think prosciutto is the best deli meat. I'm gonna go out there and say it. I don't think they used to have they used to have this deli in uh, where I went to college, and it was a New York style deli. So it had a hard roll, and they sliced all of their meats on like location when they made sandwiches. And I would always get the Italian with like salami, ham, and prosciutto. Oh yeah, so good. Mayo, vinegar, oregano. I don't like vinegar. Um, oh no, but a light spread of mayo and a little bit of oil. This is what With uh, lettuce, making. tomato, pickles. I've been making for lunch um, prosciutto with like fresh mozzarella, sliced fresh mozzarella, uh, drizzle of balsamic glaze, a little splash of rice vinegar on like good bread, little mayo, little salt and pepper. Oh, mamma mia. It's fucking delicious. Seeded roll or non seeded? Not just regular bread, but it's like like good bread, you know, not like white just- bread. Just yeah, make like your own fucking bread. bread or yeah. Yeah, 12, just like homemade bread. Multigrain. We were making a lot of our homemade bread, but now that we go to Wegmans, they make they make their bread and we were just like, let's just buy it. It's not that expensive and it doesn't take that long. But um I've been, I've, I'm not going to lie, the only thing I've been breaking for since I've been grilling a shit ton since it's finally livable in the south again. Martin's potato rolls is the only time I will mm. stop buying my own or like making my own shit. Well, I have a whole been, cabinet full of Martin rolls. <laughs> you got they're a little yeah, dude. I've been rolls. I've That's been fiending sorry, uh, all of the Martin's potato the rolls and dude, like Hawaiians. potato buns and shit. Well, like I'd that. argue in terms of like that type of bread, potato is the best, and Martin just it's just so good, dude. Hawaiian yeah. sweet, Hawaiian sweet, Hawaiian like sweet. sweet? I can I, I can fuck with Hawaiian, so but like just, I'm not aware there's of this. something about Martin's, dude. That it's oh just, yeah, like, Martin's are great. This it's just so sweet. <laughs> It's like candy bread. It really it's is. Fucking good, man. Um, yeah, and especially with like on like a hot dog or like a burger roll, mm-hmm. and then just what? Oh, God. that's what I did. That's what I did <laughs> earlier for before the show is uh, andouille sausage and martin potato. Oh rolls. yes, there's a place near me, Luke's Lobster, where it's like a lobster roll, but then they like lightly grill a martin. Uh, bun and then they slit it sideways and it's yeah. banging. I haven't had a good like sausage or uh, like a bratwurst in a, a long time. That's oh, all. Good. That's all I can buy down here because everywhere in the south, with all their hot dogs suck. You're not no. Yeah. So it's you, yeah. you buy sausage or nothing. 
Here it's like, all right, you want a hot dog? Uh, you either getting what, like Hebrew National or Nathan's Frank's? Or like a right, and that's that's what it's like here. And I disagree all beef. with all I, I all disagree beef. with anyone who thinks Hebrew National is a good hot dog. No, it's I mean right. you might as well. I'm lucky here in Philly. There's a ton of like good fucking sausage places that there's no. Yeah, Philly has a lot of them. great delis. They got a lot of great. No, everything. like go, if you ever go up north, like check out Kogel's. You can get like. It's like four dollars for a pack of like real lamb skin lined Vienna hot dogs. Fucking amazing. Yeah. One of the Everything down here is just heard, hell nah. One of the funniest things I've ever heard is uh some once had a recommend a recommendation to go to uh Five Guys, but not get a burger. To get a hot dog from Five Guys. Oh yeah, that's very common, yeah. I've never had one of their hot dogs, and I've always been told that they're actually really good. They're they are pretty good. They are pretty good. I don't know if they're better than the burgers, but they're not as greasy as their burgers. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But All right. Yeah. No, th- I was going to say, yeah, if you ever make it up to Michigan, just go to a Coney place. All of them are Kogels. It's just a way of life up there. All right. Let's get into some of this stuff. Uh, well, first off, speaking of football. Um, uh, R.I.P. So the, Dak. Yeah. So are, are the Titans... What happened with the Titans? Didn't the whole team get COVID, COVID or something? COVID, whole team. <laughs> so they're yeah. playing tonight still? I don't understand. I thought they played the it. Okay, so the timeline for it is, if I remember correctly off the top of my head, September 24th, they bring in a defensive back player. to like a, They sign a defensive back to their practice squad. He gets COVID, immediately puts him, like, they immediately pull him, put him on the list, and, like, um, Currently, Two days later, the their offensive Sunday, line backer another- coach, Shane Bowens, who's also the play caller on defense, um, his positive test comes up. They don't put him on the plane to go to the, to the Minnesota Vikings. Two days later, after the game, of course, against the Vikings, eight players are put on the COVID list. Eight different positive results come in in one day. And that blows everything up. By the end of it, they had 22 members of the team, whether it be staff or players, on the COVID list. This game was supposed to be played. So they were supposed to play the Steelers last week. They pushed the Steelers. uh, They they pretty much gave the Steelers and them a bye week uh, and moved their bye week around and then moved the Ravens-Steelers game to week eight and the Titans-Steelers game to week seven. Um. In that way, then the Ravens have a week seven by week instead of a week eight by week. It was like, oh, it was only affecting three teams there. Yeah. The game was supposed to be played on Sunday against the Bills. And they moved it to but Thursday. But they were able to push it back because they had two days in a row of no positive tests, just negative tests. And then, lo and behold, again on the third day when they're about to open up the facility after two days of no tests, no positives, somebody comes up positive. So. Now we're on the third, like they had two days, Saturday and Sunday of no positives. So they pushed the game to Tuesday and luckily uh, yesterday and today there were no new positives. So it looks like it's over for the Titans. So now it's just about getting the players back off of the list. But then the Patriots had Cam Newton and Stefan Gilmore, their top two players. Yeah, They had to push, they have four players now with, with COVID. They're they having an orgy with each other. I heard. Around. And that that postponement caused eight different games to shift. Yeah, that one actually was more disruptive to the schedule than the Titans were. But nobody says anything about it because it was only four players and it's the Patriots. Yeah. But they were just, it was annoying to be a Titans fan and just hearing every single person online saying, oh, the Titans should be forfeiting multiple games. They should be docked uh, their entire draft class. There should be no draft picks for them this year. Yeah, it was that, a, a lot of people great. overreacting. There was one personal. And I don't. Okay. I, I. 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 Yeah. That. That's going a bit too far. I can agree personally. Of yeah. They should be fined if they were breaking protocols. They, they should have did fined. a bubble. Yes. They should have did a bubble. Yeah. That's but, the problem. Hey. Is is the only way they could have done a realistic bubble was to do essentially four, like a rotating bubble Dude, where. No, this, you do yeah, it regionally be, for four, like, whatever the fine. schedule aligns. And yeah, that, they didn't think about it. just change the schedule. Yeah, because in April, they decided, oh, in September, this will be fine. It'll be gone, well, the, but it wasn't. The craziest, the craziest part about all of this to me is 
the NHL successfully pulled off a bubble and they're by far the most impacted by ticket sales. Like NFL is the richest fo- sports league in the world. To be fair, in the and NHL, does not rely on ticket sales, and they're sitting here like, well. To to be fair though, the NHL is I w- only different in the fact that they are in the playoffs for the most part already at that point. And right, but they weren't. Not, but that's the biggest ticket sales size, of the entire year. In roster size, you look at a, a football a average football team has fifty three active players plus practice squad plus staff. For 32 teams? Uh, yes, Where are you I fitting did, all I of those just, people? And uh, major hotels. If you do... If, no, you can totally do a bubble and do this correctly. I, This is... I Trying to say you can't know. is a dying argument I don't, to me. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't think you can do an NFL... Like I don't think you can do a complete NFL bubble. Oh, I a think playoff totally bubble, could've. maybe, but I don't think you can do a complete NFL. Well, bubble. this is the problem: is that not bubbling people in that bubble? The problem is oh, not yeah, you bubbling. Still the- Honestly, you still could have. Like the like the size of the cities, dude. You can have Philly there, and you literally have like thirty hotels within walking okay. distance. Like, there's a there's a ton of there's a ton of cities like that where they could have just chosen. Like, yeah, dude. There's like. Here's 20 fucking hotels with like a five minute drive of the place. There you go. Like, like I said, I, I think that they could have done a bubble if it had been done in a way where the schedule was like. Right. And that, they do all, they, week, all they needed to weeks. do was to change the schedule, in my opinion. Yeah, like and they didn't weeks. want to. Yeah. Like I was say four weeks, 12 teams per bubble. Those teams all play each other. Then you take a week off to get everyone to move around bubbles. They could right. have had it centralized in terms of bubbles and then, you know, played games right. accordingly from there. But the NFL in their total plan, which was not have a plan, you can tell they didn't have a plan. No. They which, decided that that is, it would be fine. Everything well, was And the problem going now going is like that's, that's, everyone's that's fucking getting so hurt now. It it's like everyone's getting hurt yeah. now. There's so many fucking injuries. No, None of the teams know what the fuck's going on. They're moving shit around. It's just a disaster. I've, I've heard that the NFL is going to get canceled for like three weeks straight now. This is where we're at in life, basically. I mean, it's only going to well, get the, worse. The problem, the problem Cases is are all going up everywhere. Where they can't keep pros, just straight up postponing games without needing to add more weeks to the end of the season. And right. they don't, they're reluctant to do that. I, yep. And I, that, I that's where I'm just, either. that's where, this is what the crux of my argument of they just should have done a bubble or like actually had a plan in general at all, period. Yeah. Just because like that, that's where the NBA surprisingly also and, mostly did it right. Like that, it's not so much, they had the luxury, I agree, they had the luxury of being the playoffs, but it's one of those things where it's like, okay, this is sports. You do, you, I, you need, you want to try to get ticket revenue. I get that. But, what doesn't make sense to me we're, is that the word they're not doing bubbles is like, okay, so we're talking about a respiratory illness that will destroy a player's lungs. That is your money maker. So we're just going to sacrifice literally how we earn our money. Like yeah, it that's makes where no this sense. It does yeah. never completely oh, falls apart and for it's, me. And it's, I mean, look it's going to cost them way like, more than dude, just bubbling. DeSantis, the governor of Florida, uh, recently gave the go ahead for the uh, the Miami uh, Dolphins to have the full capacity of their stadium filled. <laughs> the team right. has already said we're not doing that because that's stupid. They understand, <laughs> right. but they're still filling in. I think one quarter of it to get ticket sales. No, and I, like I, I get, I, I'm not saying like completely close down and, and like the fact that he was trying to say that bad. they should that they should it, fill fill an entire stadium with sixty six thousand people. Oh yeah, that's insane. Is entirely and that's Florida. I mean, we should just yeah. cut Florida off. Get, insert that gif of Big Bugs Bunny cutting out Florida and it drifts to sea. Yeah, uh, that that part's insane yeah. to me. But it's it was more. It's like this is where I don't get what the NFL is doing, and I understand why everyone else tried to do a bubble where it's just like okay. These athletes are literally how you make money as a sports team. And that's what you're putting at risk the most in all of this. That's what doesn't oh, make that that's what doesn't com- like compute in my head. It's like, okay, this is my product. This is what I am trying to sell, and this is what I'm gonna try to bring to the crowd. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's we're a definitely we're mess. learning a lot about um incubation periods because of this. Yeah. How tests will show up negative twice in a row for a player, and then on the third day it'll show up positive. And we're starting to learn, like, you know, contact tracing is a lot of that's happening with the NFL. Like, Stefan Gilmore. Uh, so, Cam Newton was the first Patriot to get COVID. On Friday, on, on Saturday, he his po- test came up positive. 
Uh, but the night before, him and Stefan Gilmore, who would later turn up positive, uh, had dinner together. Uh, and they still sent, felt it was fine to send Stefan Gilmore to Kansas City to play in that Chiefs game where he gave uh, uh, Mahomes a good big old hug. Luckily, Mahomes hasn't gotten COVID. Oh, that but that's been... like your that's he's the star. He is right now the face of the NFL. That is your primary moneymaker in the NFL. How you let that even happen. Like you do the contact tracing, you should have been like, all right, Gilmore, until you after this incubation period's over and you come up positive negative these days, you can't have contact. You gotta quarantine. And it's like the teams are but so big and there's there's so much it's just so much bigger of a sport. That not, they're not even gonna list it. Like it's it's pointless. You should, but they should have bubbled it. They should have made very strict rules. Should have had some sort of plan and at least mitigated it. And now you right, have a problem yeah. where it's like there was no preseason. There's barely right like correct practices. So it's just like everyone's getting hurt. Everyone's breaking shit all the time because they're not fully ready to play. It's just out of control, man. And by the yeah, way, the Bills like, are uh, or the, the the Bills are favorited tonight. So. Oh, of course they are. I mean, look at the Titans. <laughs> I'm surprised have. by the Bills. They're actually a lot of their pl- best the players are on the COVID list. Yeah, their Jake best Allen defensive players on the COVID list turned out to not be a bust like I thought he would. And yeah, he's looking okay. good actually. Yeah, they're actually doing yeah. pretty good. I'm surprised they're only favored by 3.5. I would have given them at least six in this game. Yeah, me no, too. like I I, yeah, that, I guess that's my my p- point p- point of it is just like. If I, I I just it just none of it actually makes sense of me from like a compassion <clears throat> empathy type standpoint it doesn't make sense to me and then when I apply my logic to it it still doesn't make sense to me just because it's like as an as an owner I would be telling my players like no you can't go to a party you, you oh, are how I Raiders. make money did you not see the Raiders they were all at that charity event not wearing masks all hanging out around each other. They all got fined very heavily, but it was just like they're not. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, I just. I, but that's it's also only so much if the if it's, the players aren't even taking it serious and they're supposed. I to guess be it's the just models. a different level of like risk risk management, I guess, or risk assessment. But I'm just sitting there like, yeah, dude. If I'm pay, if I'm paying Patty Mahomes like 150 million dollars, I better be it's, getting 150 million bucks back from of, that. It's also one of those things, and I said it back when sports even first came back with baseball and then the bubbles. People are going to see that sports are back and think, oh, well, everything's fine. Everything's not fine. No, no Connor McDavid got it. Oh, I know. Scared. That was. <clears throat> oh, hey, how about Taylor? Oh, was it Taylor Hall? $8 million one year with the Buffalo Sabres? Yeah, that was a, really? that was a choice. Sabre, I mean, the Sabres aren't bad, but they're not a. No, they're bad. I, he's going for, he's going for money. He's well, going. It, look, for, it's, he's going for the. He wants that. He. I guarantee we're going on sports yeah. talk, but I'm guaranteeing you he's playing the one year to try to see if no, he can get a lot more money the year after. Well, yeah, no, entirely because now it's a flat cap, so no one was going to give him the ten million he actually normally would have gotten. So like, yeah, it's, that's why it's he's half, had a one year deal. Right, it's half the money, but he also was smart. He did a no movement and no trade clause. So basically, if Buffalo still sucks at trade deadline, he can just be like, send me to Boston. Oh yeah, send me to a, a, a playoff team. Yep. Smart on him. But yeah, that was that was wild. All right, let's move on. Um Hi, we go Titans. Have you Got guys uh Titans, dude. we had a lot of good signings. I'm happy. We had the draft last week. Oh, Flyers great. haven't signed anybody. They signed Gustav Gustav Gustafson, that's it. Uh have you guys played um Baldur's Gate three at all? Not yet. I've been Not meaning to, I just so. haven't gotten to. Pretty dope. I mean, if you like, if you like uh, divinity, is it an early access or is it out? Out. Yeah, it's early access. It's very early. It's early access. <laughs> it's almost alpha. I'm not a big fan of doing early access games. There's a lot of bugs. There's a lot of shit wrong with it. But at least they, at least you can play it. Like you can get in there and play it, and it's pretty fucking fun. If you like uh, divinity, check it out. It's definitely more CRPG ish, more D and D ish. A lot of it is based on rolls and stuff, and like you see the little die rolling and. Um, very like it's 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 really fucking good. I can't wait for like the full release. I was playing it the other day, and then I got pretty far, and then ended up being fucking. It just ended up just like crashing on me. So I was like, I'll wait a couple of more months until it starts to really start to come together. But yeah, I've been digging that's it. That's kind of what I was feeling. I'm probably gonna wait on it, but I'll eventually pick it up because yeah. Spalders get. That's yeah, pretty dope. Um, and I mean, it's it's not just even it's Baldur's Gate. It's Baldur's Gate made by the Divinity Sin guys. Yeah, it feels very much like Divinity too. 
uh, like the world and like everything about it is very divinity, but there are little subtle changes to the <gasps> gameplay, the the actual like turn based mechanics and stuff like that. Um, but I've been having a good time with it. They were also upset oh. that everyone was making like normal human characters and they wanted more weirdo characters. So I thought that was a little funny story. People were kind of complaining. They were like, oh man, just because everyone's making white people, you don't want people playing the game. And they're like, no, we just want you to make different things other than white male dominant Norse god. Um, anyways, yeah, check it out. I get, well, I mean, I get that because Me too, it's, it's Baldur's Gate. It's literally, it's literally canon in D&D world. Of yeah. Just like, no, don't make a human. Go make some fucking orc dude or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and they do have a lot of depth. There's a lot of like backstory to the the character creation is pretty deep. Uh, yeah. And then in our um, go check it out. It's pretty fun if you want, and then you can just play it. And if you if it's too shitty for you, then you can just wait for them to patch it. But they're doing a good job updating it. I will say, if you get a gr- like a group to do it, go play Among Us. It's actually totally worth it. It's fantastic. Yeah, I haven't played that yet. I might have to. I might have to check it out. Among Us. Yeah. yeah. Play with friend with friends. Yeah. No, don't play over a voice call on Discord yeah. or something. No, it's if you're playing really good that way, but if you're playing with randos and pubs, it's you're gonna have a bad time. Oh yeah. No, it's no it's just, no, don't so it's not you it's a game you have to ha- sit there and be like I have six or ten friends and I'm gonna play this. Yeah, it's a- on Discord. Yeah. And then it's absolutely fantastic. There's a lot of customization to it too, where like I think for like when you're playing with new players. You kind of play it easy, um, where you know who the imposter is and you kick them off um, when you vote them out. But then, as people get more used to the game, you can set it where it's anonymous, uh, like anonymous, so you don't know if you voted out the right person. Oh, and it's going to get now even they're better. doing more updates where you're yeah, even going to make the voting so anonymous, good. which is like and the taskbar. You can and hide the taskbar. Task yeah, because the taskbar meta. That's a whole taskbar meta. I've heard repeatedly about that. Yeah, no, um, I've, I think I've been I think this their decision, lately. their decision to not make Among Us two, but rather keep supporting Among Us, was the right one. Well, yeah, because they did that because offline TV started playing it, and then it blew the fuck up, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it came out two it. years ago," and then bam, it blew up because I mean, let's be honest, in this day and age where we are all virtual, because nobody can get together, do anything safe. Uh, it was just a really good idea. I, I like social deduction games as it is, so yeah. But this was a bet. This was like a better one than like Mafia. Shout out! I know the people who behind the website Mafia.gg. They're good people, uh, but it's all text. There's no voice to it, um, and that can and the games can go really long. The well, nice thing it- with like Among Us is that I think the longest game you'll play is maybe twenty ish minutes, and that's a long game if you're doing it. If that's like. Perfect yeah, place you can, by you can even speak and run real quick. Do way if you're good. Yeah. If you have two really good imposters, even a group of ten, that game might be over in like six minutes. Not even, dude. I've I've, liter- I've literally ended a game in like three minutes. No, yeah. even less. No, Loco, Loco and I uh, we play together a lot actually. Uh, literally uh, went down right side, killed someone, called O2, ended the game at O2 before it was even finished. You gotta love the classic self report, and when you get caught killing. Now, this is a self-report. Oh, don't listen to him. And you learn that people uh, who talk over each other a lot. is such a legitimate strategy as the imposter. It's just, just be the loudest person in the room. No, they, like, I, I, I got to give props to, like, this guy's toast and, like, offline TV and them. Like, they started playing it, and I think other people saw it. Like, yeah, if, you're, if you have friends on Discord, it's actually f- phenomenal. All yeah, right. It's a big recommend from me. What about five dollars um, on Steam, by the way, or you can or get it free on the App Store. Yeah, it's free. It's free on your phone, and they also even said uh, if you run an emulator on Windows and play it that way, they don't give a shit because they still get the ad money. Oh, yeah, that's the thing is, it's ads on mobile. No ads if you pay the five dollars on Steam. The five dollars, it's yeah, you can get a you know it's for the price of a Whopper. Oh, there you go. Would you choose that over a Whopper? Yeah, I would. Yeah. <laughs> What about Nintendo? I, well, uh, assuming you got like nine friends to play it with you. What about Nintendo going after adult TikTok influencer over Pokemon branding? Poke Princess, a TikTok user with 1.9 million followers, has been forced to change her name and pay back some of her earnings after Nintendo issued a cease and desist. Um, as reported by Game Rant, 
now known as Digital Princess, was recently contacted by Nintendo not long after her attempts to trademark her own username. She was told that her business efforts were infringing on the copyrights on a number of fronts, including her Pokemon-related name and the merchandise she was selling, like t-shirts that featured Pokemon characters. Slightly understandable, but then there are countless other people selling shirts and mugs and prints featuring Nintendo characters who aren't getting cease and desist. So what's the difference? Well, she also runs a successful OnlyFans page where she posts regular adult content. Quote, Nintendo doesn't want people to think I'm in I'm that. It. Nintendo doesn't want people to think that I'm in any way, shape, or form affiliated with them or that I have partnership with them. And it all comes down back to me being an adult entertainer, entertainer she said. Nintendo is a family-friendly company, so they don't want that to at all to ruin their reputation or anything. If people think that me and them are affiliated. Obviously, that really sucks, but from a business standpoint, I have to understand that and accept it because I fucked up. She said, pointing out that she's been using the name for eight years now and that her recent merchandising and trademark efforts were done out of lack of understanding of the law and not malice towards Nintendo. What do you guys think? Do you think Nintendo is being too strict story. here? Um, the fact that she like trademarked her name and stuff like that through LegalZoom... I think made it a lot easier for um, Nintendo to track her down and, and pretty much send that legal Zoom team like a cease and desist. I'm curious, is like, I, is Pokey trademarked? Like, just Pokey? I don't know how she spells it, but I know that there's... Um, it's, she spells it like Poke. P-O-K-E. And then there's, 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 did she there's use the, e, named, the whatever on the E, though? Is no. The thing. Yeah, no, I know not there's in another this stream, Like, there's a streamer who goes by Pokey Main, but she spells it like P O K I. Right. But is like, they, can they go after so her for that? Well, can they go I mean, after I'm her? Not, I'm not surprised. It's Nintendo. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I think the fact that she was also selling merchandise that did feature, like, what obviously was a Pokeball on it. Sure, but that or at least alluded to that it, is a, that's understandable help. because, like, I'm sure like Pokemon, like the Pokeball and like the Pokemon are involved are trademarked. But is just the word pokey trademarked? Because if not, then how would they send a cease and desist? You know what I mean? Don't they have pokey bowls? Maybe they just too? scared like her. A food item? Is that trademarked? Yeah, po I, a pokey would, I would assume it's over the entire package. Pokey bowl, right? A pokey poke? Yeah, that's also. And update, it also has the uh, tilde. I'm going to give you all live updates. Titans intercepted it. Two plays later, touchdown pass, AJ Brown. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Wearing his jersey. Um, I think I actually have him as a on my bet to score. I told my friend not to start him tonight. Do you guys play uh, Fanduel at all? Do you guys? Do I, I play fantasy no. on ESPN. I, I after I started doing Fanduel, I no longer do fantasy. Like Fanduel and like those like sports betting things are so fucking addicting that I honestly think we're gonna see a whole wave of gambling addicts spawn from this online gambling epidemic that's about to explode. It's so fucking fun. Okay. I, I don't think the name the the word pokey is uh would be trademarked, but I could see entirely why it's they're going after in this. Yeah, aspect. they probably are like, look, we can ping you for the merchandise. You can't be doing that. It, no, it's it's because of the mer it's literally because of the merchandising because the way even if it even if the word pokey isn't like that it's just so into the marketing of like no it's pokey princess who has a fake mew on the shirt along with a pokey ball yeah like if it was just like no it's just pokey and there's no relation you know what i mean that's a different argument than like no this is pretty obvious what you're alluding to yeah it's pretty uh pretty intense now i understand them i, I understand them going after her the just fact that she she's an adult, adult performer as well adult entertainer yeah um Definitely, I think adds more to it as yeah, well 100%. because Nintendo is a family-friendly company. So that it, I, it, yeah, but at the same time, like I, I, I don't, I agree with that, but I also then sit there and just like, it's fucking Nintendo. Well, like, they they will straight up copyright strike you to death if you like have like five seconds of Mario footage. Yeah, I, it's it's not surprising. Hey, to, and... The funniest thing in all of this is let's remember that in the seventies. They made, uh, I believe, two Mario porn parody movies called Super Hornio Brothers, starring Ron Jeremy. Uh, and because of the way the laws were at the time, uh, instead of going through cease and desist and all that, Nintendo wound up just buying the properties. Nintendo themselves officially own the Super Hornio Brothers porn movies. <laughs> that might be a good that idea. Is not a, that is not a joke. That is a real thing. 
Well, good. Now they can use it one day. If they ever go under and they need to make some cash, they can sell those uh, merchandise. Featuring Poke Princess. That's insane. I wonder how much they bought it for. Do you know? Um. Yeah. So this is not. This is nothing surprising. It kind of yeah. falls back. I mean, it sucks. Thing. Don't get me wrong. It sucks. For, it sucks for the content creator. But like, that, I don't know what she was thinking either. Yeah. Don't do that. It don't just seems like a poor branding up. choice when you make it that obvious. Yeah, that's a little, young and dumb. Yeah, don't do that, especially if you're an adult entertainer. I under. I don't. Well, because like the, the your, your counter argument there of Pokemon, it's spelled differently, but like her entire branding has literally nothing to do with Pokemon. That's kind of like the crux of my argument there. Yeah. Yeah, and if they went after her, it would also be a lot... I think it would be a lot bigger of a deal. Yeah. They would have a lot less to stand on. With this one, they're like, you're you know, you're know, an adult entertainer, and you're selling merch with Pokemon on it. You have to get, you have to stop this stuff. Now, I wonder if she could have fought it. You know, I do wonder that. I wonder how strong they're... I wonder how strong it actually is and how it would hold up, but it, she she's not going to fight that. It doesn't make any sense. No. Well, I, I don't mean, think it, she has the money to fight it, let's be honest. Nintendo, they... Even if she wanted to fight it, there's always the fact that Nintendo could just decide to out money her and just put her into litigation for years, in which case she would never even have her case even heard before she has to drop it because of money. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, true, it, it, but yeah, that sucks. It's just for me. What, not it, just it's, anybody suing a big company like that for stuff like yeah. that. It's like trying to fight a DMCA claim. On yeah, Twitch. but on the opposite, they might You're not fucked. go that route. They might just settle with her and be like, here's a few million bucks. Just stop with the fucking branding. Because in that time, that yeah. litigation, she could be like, hey, I'm the Pokey Princess. I'm going to do this fucking anal gangbang with Mario on my shirt. Nintendo's going to be like, no, no, no. You know what I mean? They can't do anything about it until the case is closed. So they might even just buy it out. Did another porneo situation. True. Yeah, as far Good as knowledge. litigation goes, like like fighting it in court and stuff like that, you can just look at um, Trihex is a streamer on Twitch that I I, I watch him, and he does he used to do some react stuff, but he did a um, he had a he did a reaction to the uh, one of the Democratic debates I think earlier this year, which even though it was aired live on CNN's dot com, they DMCA took that down, so that's one strike. And then the Apple keynote um, from a while back, uh, at the very end of it, listed it as a um, private use. Yeah, at we the got end struck. of the video was listed as private use. We got, got struck uh, for Apple keynote, remember? He got DMCA'd for that. Yeah. So he's on two strikes, one more strike, and his channel's deleted off of Twitch. And if he even wanted to fight it, the money involved just to just even try to get it heard, you can't art, you can't fight it like that. They the companies will outspend you. Yeah, well, well yeah. I mean, no, it's very that's not transformative, but right, and that's a that's a harder that's a harder argument just because it's that's also fighting against the YouTube system. Yeah, yeah, we got the strike for the, it was for a video that Apple played during the keynote that was copyright written, and then uh, yeah, they sent the strike. They no, I mean, that wasn't clean. It was my that's, that's the hard it's part hard. about this one is like I, I want to defend it, but like you just can't sit there and. You, you got fucking you got a fucking meal on your shirt with a pokeball like, yeah at least change it uh, you know what i mean at least do something different there and try to just i don't know it doesn't matter no well, it, i don't think she gets th that's shit. the <laughs> thing is i don't even think you can change it that much to, i don't think there's a way you could argue using the name pokey and then a mew and a pokeball i i i struggle with how far you could bend that line of this is transformative i also don't understand the branding behind it anyway that like are people is she do like pokemon porn you know what i mean like is there some sort of like cross reference there Maybe rule 34 does. if it exists there's porn of it yeah that's true man i wonder what uh nintendo thinks about all their porn adaptations all right let's get into some of this tech and then get out of here let's start with yeah. let's start with zen 3 AMD. Okay, go, oh yeah, let's just let go in order. Let's go. AMD releases the Zen 3 Ryzen 5000 series processors, including the world's best gaming CPU. Available November 5th, starting at $299. These are pretty dope. Um, we, still haven't, we still haven't seen independent right. reviews of any of this stuff, Correct. unfortunately. Correct. So, But from their marketing, they did a better job of... Being realistic. Yeah, like they they didn't try they didn't they did a better job after being all of them have been called out of like okay, here is an actual more tangible benchmark 
mm-hmm. to use as a reference instead of just making shit up basically yeah the way that they did it wh- the way they did it was actual gains from previous generation rather than the percentage gained on top of the previous generation so rather than saying right. like 30 percent better than last year's score it was like it's actually nine percent better than the score like the actual top of the score so right. it was like well okay that's actually kind of interesting um so which starts- makes it a lot more believable because and a lot easier that, to see, a lot easier to understand too, you know. Right, and that that's always been the problem with like all the marketing is you'll have Intel and AMD being like, yeah, dude, it's 20, 30% better. And then everyone will be like, hey, it's like five. Yeah. And like, so if you're going to start as saying, hey, it's nine or five and it ends up being like eight. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. That Those marketing, like the, the way they stretch those numbers oh, never ceases to amaze me. It's It's really cool, actually. That math that's behind that, like stretching of those numbers is pretty crazy. But it starts at the Ryzen 5 5600X, 6 core, 12 thread, 65 watt, uh, 4.6 with, uh, and that's 300. Uh, Ryzen 7 they're, is at a 8 core. Uh, they're only releasing the top end parts so far. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, mainly the, the, the gaming like desktop parts that most people are going to buy. Well, uh, I. Yeah, yes and no. Like that's the, like this is this I think they're the reason why they're launching these first I think is cuz most people actually buy the tier under this. Yeah. Because like okay, so like the the 3600 is always was a, it's a strong seller or what uh what? This is the 5600. Yeah. The 5600 and the 5600X, the way that skew has always worked is the X is slightly better but it was $50 more. So everyone would buy the cheaper part and just overclock it because they overclock to be about the same. Yeah. So I think they're just releasing the higher skew parts first to just get more money. Yeah. Yeah. These are essentially like Intel's K series. Um, and then you have, you have a six core, you have an eight core, 12 core, 16 core. Now I personally think just from what we've seen, <clears throat> that the the Ryzen 9 5900X is is around the best value in terms of these cards because they are a jump in price from the last generation, um, and in terms of like the performance that you're getting compared to the Intel counterpart, this is fifty bucks more than the nine ten nine hundred, but it also is in many ways better than the ten nine hundred in that difference. You are getting a lot much more performance above it for just that increase in fifty bucks. And uh, the rest of the ones are kind of, you know, they're they're kind of competitive with with Intel, um, and I, well, I, uh, I don't know if I'd say it was the best. That would I'm still we still have to wait for real numbers, but I, I don't know if I'd say that's the best value until we have all well, of the I don't actual know if best numbers. Value is the right word. More so, depending on what you're doing. Like if you're just running games, no, don't fucking buy that. Well, I mean, uh, I mean value in terms of what Intel is offering. So like comparative to Intel. I think this would be from the performance that you're getting above Intel from just with the numbers that they've shown 50 bucks okay. more than the 10900 is I think worth it to go with the 5900 over any of Wasn't the other the series. Wasn't the 5900 500 bucks? Um no, 550. It's 550. So it's 5 it's 550. Yeah, I, I And then the 9 and you, the 10900 is 500. chip that competes be, uh, good against intel or better than intel i'm gonna go with the 300 dollar one not the 550 yeah i don't know how close the 5600 competes with the 10 900 but um right that's that's where i'm saying like i, I need to actually see numbers because if you're going off of our cinebench single scores of leaks the 5600 beats everything it beats all of intel's chips yeah yeah but you're also a six core, so you would be a six core against a ten core. I think the ten nine hundred K. Right, and that's where that's where I'm going towards. A, I I can't say the the five hundred and fifty dollar chip is a good value for everybody just because it depends on what you're doing. Yeah, if you and just you need, need like a cores? if you just need like a six core chip and you want a badass chip, I mean it's hard to it's hard to deny the three hundred dollar chip is pretty badass. Well, what right, would that be compared the to the gaming, Intel? Like you, you don't need a ten core chip for gaming. No, no, no. You know what I mean? Like that. That's what I'm saying. And the vast majority of consumers are just buying it for games. No, but I think you're thinking. I think you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. I'm saying value it comparative to what Intel is offering. You know what I mean? So the performance that from just from the the benchmarks that I've seen compared to the Intel counterpart. Are, are you are you trying to are you are, so are you saying stack core two core? 
Yes, compared to so like Intel. a six core against a six core, a ten right. core, like so ignore for, pricing, just straight correct. six to six. Okay, correct, because you're getting gotcha. two extra cores for fifty bucks, and you're getting that extra, however much IPC uplift above the ten nine hundred, just for that extra fifty bucks over the ten nine hundred K. And I think that's a pretty good value. It's pretty competitive to like that top end Intel chip, and then the fifty nine fifty X just kind of blows them all away. Um, yeah, I mean that. No, I, I agree with that. And then if you don't need the exact physical cores it there's i don't know dude it's looking like the 3600 might actually even be better than anything anyways yeah it's pretty badass it's pretty badass and then like you were saying like the 5600 would come in 50 bucks cheaper and then you can yeah, even and then get that overclock it yeah like so, i don't know i'm i'm very interested in this whole launch like there's really no reason like to get intel right now with this with this lineup this well that's what that's the hope you know what i mean because that we still have Rocket. There wasn't a huge reason to get Intel last lineup except for gaming. Intel still won in gaming. Right. And it, this was literally just like a... All AMD has to do is get like 5% better at games and then there's no reason to buy Intel. This this so far doesn't seem that impressive compared to what the last gen was for AMD. But it does look like it's enough to just be like, no, they're even better at gaming finally. Yeah. They're, they, it, it's looking like they just literally might be better in every work case, no yeah. matter what. Yeah. Now, I, I'm the only thing I'm trying to think of is like Intel Quick Sync and like. I was going to say Quick Sync. That's it. And like those weird little like Intel things that are important. Like there are applications that they do utilize Quick Sync, they do utilize some of the Intel uh, um, board management. You, yeah. Like if, you, if you're dead set on if you need quick sync for like premiere I, I can see that as an argument but now that they've really opened up cuda it's a little bit less of an argument yeah but or like optane but like it in, uh, dude intel's got to come out and punch hard because they're that that's a weird place that yeah, Either I mean, that or they they have to start slashing pricing because right. amd was always they're gonna have to start cutting prices. Was, yeah, they, they got to cut prices because AMD was worse, but you could still argue AMD's good value because AMD was always half the fucking price, basically. Right. So that's why this was interesting because I was kind of just like, ah, I was like, considering the performance that you kind of see from the, from what they were showing, it was like, eh, they're kind of competing on price, but it doesn't seem like it's like what the old AMD was, where it was like, it's competing really well, but it was also a lot cheaper. Now it's right. like they've bumped the pricing up, so it's about equivalent to Intel, sometimes more expensive, and you're getting a little bit more, but it's also unequivocally better from what they're showing in a lot of these situations. And that's why I was like, I like the 5900X because you do get two extra cores, you do get the better performance, and it's only 50 bucks more over the 10900. And I would have to see, like, I want to see the real numbers and I want to see what Intel's yeah. counterparts have to do. And I do, I mean, we do, ha this is the problem with like, the AMD and then Intel, because what's Intel's next release going to be like? Because they've been showing impressive stuff with uh, with Rocket Lake and what was the what was the other one? Tiger Lake, or was Tiger Lake the last? Yeah, but one? they weren't they weren't that that impressive because now we've seen ten nanometer and at least they're which would be AMD's seven right. And their first initial jump wasn't. I mean that's where we're at right now, and is the that's the eleven series, and the stuff looks better than the eleven series, so. Ah, uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe Intel can put, come back, but like if they if they don't, they just need to the, immediately cut price in. That they would have to, because there would be no. It would be very difficult to to persuade someone to go Intel over AMD, and CPU. Yeah. Which is good. I mean, this is what exactly what you want. You want AMD yeah. competing on this realm. Well, I mean, even even in uh, mobile, Intel still has a lead in mobile, I think, but AMD's c closed that gap a shit ton. And you've been seeing those the last gen of AMD mobile actually being really good, but also having battery life finally. Yeah, yeah, and like the the, the eleventh rock eleventh gen rocket like that we've been seeing it was like that's all like mobile stuff and it looks okay. And I'm wondering, I, it, I'm just wondering it, like wh how far is their desktop going to be able to push it? And right, and they're still like I know their desktop parts are there. It's not eleven. Uh, it's not eleven nanometer. It's still going to be based on the fourteen nanometer. So they're kind of it's it's gonna be a tight fucking race. For I mean, if races. if if it's still ten nanometer, like they're they're fucked. It's gonna be interesting. Like, what if they can't? 
what if they can't, you know what I mean? Like, what if they just can't? <laughs> then what and, the fuck uh, are they going to do? They're going to have to, like, lose money on this release? That's what it's sounding like. They're going to, no, they're just going to have to cut pricing. And yeah, I guess probably lose some money. Because, like, if they, if they, if they have to drop back to 14 nanometer for production, like, they, we've already seen the 999K, like, three times. And yeah. the, each one hasn't gotten better. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, for me to go with the 10900K over the 5900, it would have to be around like 400 bucks, which is $100 cheaper than what it's at now. Otherwise, I'm just like, 12 core, 24 thread, you can probably get up to 5 gigahertz. I mean, that's pretty fucking badass. And then, or you could just I mean, get it, the it fucking 16 to 4. core. 4.8. You can probably, you can probably push it 4.9 and call it 5. Yeah. And I mean, like, the fucking top of the line 16 core is like that's like a baby thread ripper you know what i mean that boosts insane at 800 bucks less than a grand for like a thread ripper part i wonder are we gonna yeah. see another thread ripper series oh event yeah it would be eventually i think they're oh, i would love a thread ripper build now. a little lower on it at the moment i would just render i would literally just run handbrake on it all day just for fun <laughs> yeah i mean i would i would just stick with the high-end ryzen parts at this point honestly just because they're getting they're getting that good yeah 800 bucks they're, for 16 core up to 4.9 right and then you but the the downside of th like unless you need the massive amounts of ram or storage like and, and basically if you unless you specifically need a workstation yeah like all those pieces i would just buy high and rise yeah that's probably the that's probably the way to go it's i like, i mean this has you, been this way last you year know too. you need over 256 gigs of ram if you cannot answer that question, don't buy that. <laughs> yeah, true. All right. Um, so yeah, this was impressive. And then they teased, uh, they teased their, uh, what is it called? The, the 6,000 big Navi graphics card. And they were showing that it's, it's looking like from three benchmarks that it's reaching around 3080 performance. And the rumor was that it was going to be priced around 3070. I don't know. I considering last year's release was a flop on pricing. I expect the same kind of deal. I don't. I don't expect. I, it to, was, I just really. I disagree with the. I thought the last the fifty seven hundred was like perfectly priced. Was it? I thought it was priced uh, way too high. I don't remember what the no, price release it, was. No, because it was punching above the twenty sixty and the twenty sixty super, and it was basically a twenty seventy for the price of it was it was it was between a twenty sixty super and a twenty seventy super for like three hundred and eighty bucks yeah hold on let me see here i mean it it it, it was it was probably about if it was a if it was an Let's nvidia see. card it would have cost 450 bucks and it was 380 bucks technically 400 but they always sold cheaper because that's the other thing with amd is like the what the the 5900 x is going to come out at 550 in two weeks it's going to be 500 bucks yeah, so it was like 400, 5700 was 350. And then this was 2019, which was the super release, right? Yeah. No, they they released the super to combat these cards because these cards killed the original ones. I don't remember. I honestly don't remember. Like that that was why I thought they were it releasing was the super I was thought this was a um these were they were they weren't i mean they're not 2080 ti's or anything like that but like mm -hmm. that's why they started releasing the super cards was like for they were coming out at 400 bucks and basically beat a 500 hundred dollar 2070 which became the 2060 super at the same price right 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 okay i see what you're saying all right, so I mean, maybe do you think it's gonna come in priced around like a 30, 30 70? I don't know. I mean, I think I'm because that would be that would be that's, along that's the same strategy, lines as this. Basically, you know what I mean? That would come around the long along the same lines as like what this release was. Right. That that would I can see why people are guessing that because yeah, that's been their that's been their strategy for a while is just barely undercut it and try to sell better on the cheap end. Cheap end. <laughs> Like that was the that was the original 480 was like here's the best graphics card for $200 and it competes like a $250 $300 graphics card. How much is the 3070? About 500. 500 probably yeah. 600 for an AI. I could see this being slightly more expensive than the 570 but or the 
30 70 but being closer to a 30 80 that sounds about right for what amd likes to do yeah and that's what it looks like from the benchmarks they released which was borderlands 3 modern warfare and gears 5 which are a pretty good range of benchmarks actually borderlands is pretty pretty intense um so that's gonna be pretty interesting that's gonna wait be borderlands 3 gears 5 and what else um modern warfare the latest modern warfare okay i would be interested to see let's see the benchmarks exactly hold on right well okay i would also be interested to see some benchmarks that weren't um all triple a games made for amd hardware on consoles <laughs> true good point <laughs> i didn't even think of that good point uh where is there i, I just mean want to see hey slide. if that's the, the type of stuff you run definitely go amd but that that is something to factor in with the marketing yeah so borderlands uh direct x12 4k ultra with 60 frames that's just there's no like one percent it's just a 61 modern warfare was 88 and gears of war was 73 so like looking at this it's like okay well it looks like we have a lot to expect from the consoles at least you know what i mean at least the consoles are going to be punching pretty heavily above their weight um i hope so because i still might buy the chest i'm still i'm still in that camp that i might just say fuck it and buy a xbox just cause <laughs> i mean i'm definitely gonna be getting them i mean and not not the expensive one like i'm gonna buy a playstation 5 but like yeah i can just buy a xbox the cheap xbox with game pass for everything else yeah just throw it on your tv play Bye i just want to play chill dude yeah that's it um all right so we have that now we have the iphone release which was today right, yeah well um, no that that was that was pretty i i i want to see all of the benchmarks really come out but this i might it might, might be time for me to upgrade probably won't but well if see this I is the were, thing if i were to consider if these if the actual third party benchmarks come out similar to where this is looking if you were haven't bought into amd like i did with the first gen but i've considered it this sounds like the one to buy because what this sounds like is if we're only seeing a slight improvement but it's a big enough improvement to just be better that's that's what that's the time to buy because this could be like uh has well this could be like you know the fourth gen intels or the first gen intel series or like the seventh gen you know what i mean where it's like cool everything mm -hmm. we're I'm, I'm i could see like the next amd chips only being like right 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 four right. percent better you know what i mean so if you're going to like invest heavily this yeah I'm, I'm getting those kind of vibes of like here's the here's where the exponential curve starts flattening yeah that's what i'm trying to say yeah i'm thinking about it as well i've been thinking about amd for a while and I mean, uh, I'm torn on the 5900 or the 5950, and we'll see. I don't know if I don't know if I need it right now, but it look it. it there, I don't really see a reason to to go with an Intel build right now. I'm more curious to see how their GPUs are going to stack up against Nvidia's. That's really one of because Nvidia it came out swinging this year, so it's going to be interesting yeah. to see how it stacks up. Well, and I think I think they came out swinging because thank God they finally have something to show, and I think AMD finally also has something to show, so they had to. Yeah. So yeah, I might all I might just do a full computer building on. I don't know. Full red. All right. Um, I don't know about full red. I'm still kind of an AMD shield, but or an Nvidia shield, but I I would if I could. What about an iPhone shill? I'm an iPhone. I'm a I'm an iPhone shill. An now, iPhone dude. Shill. dude, this iPhone is fucking so. You buy sick. every iPhone. I have it. I don't. I don't buy every iPhone, but. Lately, it feels like it sometimes. <laughs> I want to. I I literally want to, and I'm happy I didn't buy the the one last year because I specifically wanted this one, the iPhone 4 design. No, yeah, and no, it, it this, fucking delivered, I, dude. It delivered. I I I'm look at that gold. So confused, I guess. I'll, I'll say confused, just because I don't know. I've been very happy with my current phone, which it, again is an iPhone and had no interest in actually upgrading because my phone's by far good enough for everything. This is the first iPhone I think they've had in a long time that's actually been like, no, this is a fucking fantastic phone. You should just buy it. 
Yeah, it's pretty fucking. It's pretty like fucking I, I have hard no to reason to actually upgrade my. I phone. know, me, and this me is either. the first Apple <laughs> phone I've felt like in probably five years where it's just like, no, this is this is the one. Yeah, this is like this is their complete refinement of the ten series, which is the Notch series. Um, they finally imp- like. I'm happy that they kind of implemented it the the iPhone four design on this iteration because. To me, it's like just like the, the four perfect is so refinement. good. This phone looks beautiful. And then it comes in four sizes. You can get a tiny ass one. You can get just that's a the normal only one. Qualm. That's my only qualm. They finally did it. They made an iPhone Mini. It's all we've ever wanted in life, basically. And they didn't make a Pro version. Yeah, it would have been interesting to see an iPhone Mini Pro. That's all I wanted. That would have been yeah, pretty stick, sick. Stick all the cameras on the iPhone yeah. Mini. I would have bought it. About buy it in a heartbeat. That would have been pretty sick. Um, but nonetheless, like it's still good. Like it's still a badass. Oh yeah, phone, you it's know? still probably the one I'm more more likely to buy. Yeah, I'm I'm oh, curious. I'm curious to know exactly. I I want to hold it because I'm torn between the 12 Pro Max because I have the the 10 S and I like this size. But then I use my wife's phone. I'm like, damn, it would be nice to have a that bigger phone. Uh, but then again, I go back, I'm like, or just go even smaller. So being stuck in the middle, I just, I'm kind of just like, yeah, I'd rather I go either really small or go really big. So I kind of want to hold the small one before I make a decision. But, uh, just on the spec, this is their five nanometer process. 5g is in here. Real 5g. They made a whole big deal. It's the real 5g you're going to get. I think they said benchmarks of like 3.1 gigabits per second, which is nutty. Uh, and then uh, at least a typical one gigabit connection. Um, A14 Bionic chip is their new processor chip. They has a li- lidar scan. Now this is on the uh, let's well let's go with the 12 real quick, um, which all of that's in there as well. Uh, so on the 12, you're pretty much getting everything except the new cameras. You're getting the 5G, the five nanometer. You're getting an OLED. I mean, you're just getting like the same sort of quality you would expect from the last sort of uh uh pro model except you're not getting those pro camera upgrades and then on the 12 pro you're getting the camera upgrades you're getting the 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 uh the the lidar scanner you're getting the uh what was the other thing they added grimes probably knows what i'm talking about um um, what the fuck was the other thing they added to the pro is this uh, uh, all the cool cameras and so the fact that it's all 10 bit, which yeah. is actually kind of sick. Yeah. And I think that's the main difference between the 12 and the 12 pro are the cameras. Yes. Cause it is the same exact chip. They didn't No, they It's didn't. all, it's all the same. Fo- that's, that's how they've been doing them for a while. It's all the, basically the same phone, just different screens and different no, cam worse cameras. Yeah. Yeah. And the 12 is nice, but the 12 pro, they also got the new blue color, which I think looks really good, but I'm, I like the midnight green a lot. Uh, that being said, the blue looks nice. And so essentially the big, the big thing here, in my opinion, is you're getting 4k 60 HDR Dolby vision that you can record in 10 bit. They have like this new fucking, uh, IBIS system in there, or like some sort of like upgraded IBIS, just better optics. They made the sensors a little bit bigger, made the optic optics a little bit better. And, um, and then on top of that, you have... They're still not there, but they're a lot better. Yeah, in terms of like camera quality from Google. Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't even mean from Google. I just mean like this. This is this is a hell of a good step for cell phone cameras, but they're still we're still quite a ways off of them. Like me not wanting to keep buying more Fuji cams. Yeah, I don't think you'll. I honestly don't think we'll ever get there unless someone puts a one inch sensor in the camera. You know yeah. what I mean? Which would be awesome. Well, I mean, it, that would be great. I think that was my comparison. Is like th- this still do- if if you're thinking this is really really good, but this still isn't like an RX100 to me or a ZV1 or whatever. Yeah, you're not. Uh, it's just not there just quite yet. But it's. I do wish they would just there. yeah just slap a one inch sensor How with sick like would GoPro or someone and a mount like give me a mount. <laughs> that could put a lens on it um and there's i mean i really i really don't have too much to say it's just like the complete refinement of it all you basically get a reference monitor in your pocket that shoots 4k 60 10 bit that's pretty fucking good and it's an iphone you know what i mean and it has all the iphone bells and whistles great build quality they have this new glass that they said is a lot stronger um 
it's really all about the 5G and the new cameras and the iPhone 4 and design. The new, and the new chip <laughs> that's actually really good. And the new chip. And I'm, ha- I'm hoping that this chip ushers in the 10-bit 422 because this is going to be H.265. There's no way they're going to wrap they, this in H.264, which is not going to happen. Yeah. They also dropped all the cameras, too. Uh, I mean, they made them all faster. So they're yep. actually hopefully good at low light. Yep. All the cameras have, I mean, from the ultra wide up to the telephoto, all have a lot better optics in them. Oh, yeah. They have Apple Pro Raw coming. So you're going to finally be able to actually have a raw output. Now, they had, well, they I shouldn't say they, but other camera apps could utilize raw but it wasn't actual raw it was literally just the raw data from whatever the iphone was taking so it was still stacking those images in uh in a finished manner in a baked in manner so apple said well now we're just gonna give you the actual unbaked in data that you can fuck around with and just call it apple pro raw which is awesome so now you can get you, you can actually change things and it's not gonna fucking get all noisy and it's not gonna get all fucked up on you um, yeah, which is awesome. I do think the uh, the it, like adding the magnet on the back was actually kind of cool, dude. I was just about to say that's my favorite feature of the new phone. Is the I don't know if my, I don't know if it's my favorite, but like if you're gonna make a gimmick, that's like actually a, a kind of okay gimmick. This is why it's my favorite because it's 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 a very Apple thing to do, and I hate having to put a case on my phone so I could put it on the magnetic dash on my car. And I always just like, why don't I, like, why don't I, uh, phone builders build the magnets in so I can just slap it on. I don't have to have some stupid fucking case on there. Uh, I'm definitely it. leaving the case always though. But like, well, yeah, I'm still going to put a, slap a case on it. I'm not spending a thousand bucks and not putting it in a case. Yeah, but you don't need like the magnet case. You know what I mean? You don't need yeah, the fucking stupid. You don't need a special second case. Yeah. For you don't need the stupid case that, or, or have like the stupid magnet that you have to put in there. It's just, it's just in there. You know what I mean? So I'm pumped on yeah. that. It's now, just I'm like refining curious, things too. That's how, what I like about it. How good the magnets are. So like say I did put like a moment case on it. Will the magnet still work through the moment case? I don't know how it would work through cases that don't have magnets. Right. Um, or if they if this is gonna you're gonna start seeing moment add magnets or like other cases add just a little bit just to yeah. make it all still work. Yeah, I'm I think it's a cool concept. I, like, I this like is where I'm like this is where I'm like it's it's very practical and I think it's really cool. But at the same time, I just would probably not use it just because, again, I'm I'm going to try to slap. It. And it works with the case. Like, it is its own magnetic case, you know. But, like, I I don't want to necessarily stick an otter box on there, you know what I mean? Or, like, a life proof. But I also kind of do. Yeah, I mean, I like I like the idea of the magnet case on or the magnets in there. So, I, yeah. I just, I just, I the dream of just slapping my phone on any magnet and then just staying there is is now yeah. finally realized. I am very disappointed, not at 120 hertz. I honestly don't give a shit about 120 hertz on a cell phone, but it's still fucking lightning. I Come on. This would have been perfect if it had USB-C. Yeah. The fact that it was still lightning was really just like, you're going you're gonna to string us along for another year. It has to be USB-C next year. I just can't imagine it still being lightning. Just yeah. kill the No, I, I agree with that. That does kind of suck. But it's like, I don't know. This is... Yeah, this is it's a this is like Apple needed this like five years ago when they were having all of the issues of like why don't people upgrade their phones because they just keep making the same one. This is finally like the first phone I felt like in a long time where it's like okay, this is legitimately better in every way than any phone they've made before. Yeah, it, this is um this is a fucking awesome release. I'm trying to find the top the top brightness of the samsung phone i want to know how many nits i think it's 1300 nits um but i could be wrong yeah so you're getting 1200 nits of brightness which is awesome it's an oled panel it's just a cool fucking phone man what color are you gonna get you're gonna get the blue one i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna get one immediately (laughs) but like i'm i'm tempted i'm due for an upgrade I think I'm going to upgrade to, I don't know which one I want. I, I might go this small one too. I'm not 100% sold. Now, I'm curious more about the 5G. Oh, by the way, I, I meant to, I yeah. forgot to say. So Apple pushed an upgrade to the, to the uh, AirPods that is spatial audio. It's so fucking dope. So now the AirPods, 
you can look at the screen and if it has Dolby audio, you can turn your head and the audio stays where the device is. It's really, it sounds stupid, but it actually makes a really big difference. So like when someone's like talking to you or you're turning your head somewhere, you actually, you're just more immersed in a really odd way. And it, it, it actually makes a really big difference. So if you have the AirPod Pros, you have to kind of, if it, if it hasn't already updated, you have to like force an upgrade by just like unplugging the thing or something uh, and try it out because it's actually really impressive. And and um, I'm happy they do stupid little shit like that because I was just like, holy shit, this is really weird. The fact that it didn't make sense to me. I was like, why would you, wouldn't you want the audio to always be in the same position? Uh, but it doesn't. It just stays where the TV yeah. is. So you can turn your head and you're like, oh, that's, this is where the guy is speaking. You know what I mean? And it just, in that sense of the, in, in that sense, it's like you start to get more immersed in it. It's pretty cool. I do love too, though, that this is like the scummiest move ever. They, the charger <laughs> yeah no there's no there's no ear pods in it or headphones and there's no power brick in it but then the only cable that they include is a USB C to lightning cable yeah so you have to have an iPad Pro but see this is what i was thinking i i saw someone on reddit talking about that well um, no cuz it spe- says specifically on their website and this is why i'm giving them share for this is iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 mini do not include a power adapter ear pods. Please use your current Apple power adapter and headphones. The only one that does that is the iPad Pro. Well, I think I was thinking like, I was thinking the same thing, but then I was thinking, well, who? you should honestly have some sort of like lightning, like little fucking lightning brick. Like they're just fucking everywhere. So if they're going to say that it, it's going right, to help. But they're their- not USB-C. They're all USB-A. Yeah, but do you have someone has to have some sort of lightning cable? I mean, I have like ten of them. You know what I mean? They come in so many. No, I know, I know. It's just that I I agree, but if you if you don't, that is just like, it's just because of the way they worded that, where it's like, okay, you can only charge this phone from us if you bought an iPad Pro. Yeah, and I I understand like, I it, I understand if it was both a USB-A sides. USB A to lightning cable. I don't care. Yeah, but then I would have been like, well, why didn't they just give me the USB-C one and then give me the better charger, the charging ca-? You know what I mean? Like, th- that's kind of where I was like, well, would I rather them give me the USB-A cable or then just give me the better USB-C cable? I'd rather them give but me I the have USB-A so many- cable because that's what all of their previous chargers are for. And if their argument is use your old charger, give right. me the one that works with my old charger. Right, yeah. No, that was that. That's kind of where I was just like, well... If they're going to claim that it's for carbon footprint or whatever, then whatever. But I wonder if I wonder if I would have rather had, because it doesn't matter to me. I have so many fucking USB-C cables, USB-A lightning cables. I mean, but I am in a oh, minority. Yeah, same. I'm like, in a it's, minority it's, it's situation. It's not actually that big of a deal, but it's, it's just the way that that was marketed. That is just like, yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Like, are people going to so take it? Stupid. Are people going to take it as like, they're just trying to push me to get another charger. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I think you have to. T- I think that is entirely how to take it just because they chose to use a type C instead of a type A. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are going to take it that way. I wonder if they're going to start to release like little five watt bricks, but USB-C. I would imagine not. I don't. I, I think they're. I don't know. Who, who the fuck? I they mean, should have just made a fucking USB-C they, they, uh, I think port. they would have to because the only things that they have that charges this phone with the included cable is an iPad Pro or a MacBook. Yeah. Like, That's so, what I'm like, thinking. I, like, I feel like they, they, that they have to start doing like a 5, 10 watt yeah. mini, mini brick. You know what I mean? Yeah. And charge like, you know, 5, 10 bucks for it. Don't charge fucking 20 bucks for it. But um, yeah. I, I think what they're pushing more people is like just do everything wireless, which is whatever. But I mean, I don't really like wireless charging when I'm at my desk and stuff. I like it more in the terms of like when I go to bed, I can just plop it down. It's like when I want to use it, I I rather it constantly be charging. I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm alone in that. I know a lot of people like the wireless charger while they're using it, but I kind of rather just have it plugged in. Overall, though, uh, that's very. I pre- I prefer the wireless charger on my desk, and then plug in. And then plug night. it in but that yeah. night. Yeah, I th- I, I prefer to do both wireless, but like, I don't know. There's just, uh, I just I haven't converted to wireless at night just because I'm like, 
worried I'm going to hit it in my sleep or sure. something. There's just that security blanket of a hard wire. Yeah. Wait, well, now with the magnets, hopefully it True. stays put. Uh, and then finally on pricing, uh, the top of the line is 1100 uh, well, Bottom of the line is 700 That is actually a lot better yeah. than I expected. Yeah, so, yeah, top. So you can get an iPhone yeah. 12 mini for 700 bucks, or, like, and then they're all... Black Friday is going to happen, and they're, you're going to be able to get this phone for, like, 400 bucks. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good phone. And then check out the financing option. So... If you were to, I think what they said was, if you were to trade in your phone from a ten, like it could be any any phone from from a ten to till now, um, I think they said it was fifteen dollars a month if you went to Verizon, and then it was twelve bucks a month for, um, if you went uh, for the mini, and then um, I don't think that I don't think that financing offers for the pros yeah that's pretty good yeah no it's yeah if you have an iphone to trade in and you're already in verizon it's 12 bucks a month that's what i mean i gotta do math god damn it for 24 months for two years that's cheap as hell how much is it how much does it come out to 12 wait yeah 12 bucks a month for 24 months so 12 yeah that's only 288 bucks dude yeah it's pretty insane yeah no i was just actually realizing that it's like yeah if you're gonna if you can if you trade in a phone that mm -hmm, that's that's smart by them okay there you go that's that's going back to going back to all of our arguments in the past here they're actually cutting margins yeah it's pretty insane and now I, i mean yeah now I, mean, I don't that does know. require the trade in, but like if you if I can trade in my XR and, and it's twenty four dollars a month, yeah, dude, twenty four dollars a month for the pro for twenty. So that's why surprise, yeah, yeah. No, if it that's shit, I might be really tempted to go mini just because I like the mini size, but like especially at that price, that's kind of nutty, actually. Yeah, that's pretty insane. So, and like. I mean, I don't know where you guys are, but here in Philly, we have a really competitive Wi-Fi scene, <laughs> and like I'm, all, I I can just swip, switch, and swap. Like it's not it's not very difficult here because it's Sprint. We have Verizon. We have all the fucking telecoms here, and five G is starting to really become a thing in Philadelphia. So I'm curious, to, like, is it going to be worth? Like, I really want to see what this five G is all about, and I want to see if it's actually going to be worth it. And um, I'll keep you guys updated on that. But I don't know. Should I, I? I don't know if I want to go Verizon. If I want to stick with T-Mobile, Sprint. Because uh, when I see that's fair. when I see I'm this sick. pricing, I'm like, maybe I just go Verizon. I already have Verizon FiO, so they could just fucking fold it into my plan. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna stick with Verizon just because uh, it's just easier for me, honestly. Yeah, I mean, if you already have Verizon, I mean, I think Verizon's doing pretty good. They're pretty competitive. Yeah. They suck, dude. Let's be real. But yeah, do they? I don't know. I like oh, they're the like, they're, they're really they're 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 big red they're they're like Comcast they're they do pretty good but they're kind of expensive and they try to eat buy out everyone. Yeah, I know. Like the FiOS plan, I was I've been very happy with Verizon FiOS, but I don't have any other Verizon service. I don't have like a phone plan. They yeah. could try to. Oh, no, I've just phone. I've just used them because. Uh, long story short, hey, government discounts. Yeah. All right, so that's the iPhone, and then last we have this camera. What do you think of the fucking Panasonic uh, Lumix EGH1? I was going to try to see what is if I went pro, go Pacific. What do I do with the trade in? Thirty. Okay, so it'd be thirty-one. That's three times the price to go pro. No, twenty-three, twenty-four. Yeah, it's like five Shit, fifty. Dude. Five five hundred and seventy-six bucks it's for like an iPhone off, Pro. Half off the phone. And it's a pretty dope phone. It's not like you're getting a shit phone, you know what I mean? Uh, the, that actually really... Now I'm like actually kind of super salty that they didn't make this thing USB-C. Because <laughs> I want to buy an iPad then. I mean... I would, just, I, would just, I would just get the Max and not buy an iPad. Dude, there's a that. strong case for that these days, you know? Especially since this is the new 14 Bionic. Yeah, like that... I, I think that... That maybe that is the reason 
why they didn't make it USB-C because yeah, dude, just buy the iPhone 12 Pro, the Max, the the fucking size, the one that's already the size of a tablet anyway, and there's your iPad Pro. Yeah. Yeah, this is your iPad Pro Mini. It was pretty competitive. When I heard the financing option, I was like, wait, what? That sounds insane. All right, so that's the I mean, iPhone 12 Pro. I'm very happy with this release. This is easily their best release in a long time. This, I think the whole 10 series has been good, but this was like, this is their final refinement. Hopefully, we get a new design either next year or the year after, after the S version, I guess. I mean, yeah, um, if you if you trade in your if you trade in your phone and you go with the Pro, it's the price of an iPad Air. Yeah, that's not bad. This, here's your here's your iPad Air. Yeah, but it's also your phone. Yeah, and I still now, would uh, like an iPad Air though. <laughs> I would too, but like that that's because just because the pen, but that not a lot of people like, like if, they, the pen. if this had USB C, I'd I'd already be doing it. If right it now. had USB C, if it had pen support. If it was foldable, then you can unfold it into the size of an iPad Air. Oh, I mean, that, yeah, that's that that's would be a cool dream, future. Right? But I'm just like right now, specifically, like, yeah, dude, I'd just buy this and not buy the iPad. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't be mad at that. And I think I'm gonna go Pacific Blue, man. I think I like that blue a lot. Yeah, I kind of do too. If I were to do that, or <clears throat> uh, the option is still buy the iphone mini and an ipad yeah which then is there's also the, the life HomePod, that i was living. which i do I, the only reason why i want to point out the home pod i like this one a lot more than the original and that is just because pricing yeah there you go it's 100 bucks they have, an, they have a home pod i would actually consider buying finally well how much is the regular home pod was it like 400 dollars or something yeah it was like three something yeah and my whole no, argument against that was i'm not spending 300 plus dollars on a speaker that i can't plug a fucking anything into yeah no thank you <laughs> was- at a hundred dollars i could maybe start having that argument yeah. so that's why i'm like thank you you finally actually just if you're not gonna let me use it as a fucking speaker at least price it appropriately <laughs> i do want to hear it like the homebot does sound good no I it just- does it's a great speaker it's just i'm not gonna spend that much on a speaker that yeah can- me either lose support and become a useless brick yeah that was i don't know anyone that even has one (laughs) how many did they sell five i bet you grimes grimes you have one oh he says it never interested him (laughs) the mini the mini i think could be much more interesting just because it's it's more usable basically and it's actually at a price where you can consider it more like it's actually at a price that's competitive of like if you want it as a siri bot cool welcome you've made it to echo pricing and google speaker pricing whatever yeah you know what i mean yeah and then as an actual this speaker is, that's more what i would be willing to spend on a dumb smart speaker i can't plug anything this is like it. their fucking christmas gift that they like to always add in there you know yeah they always like, like I, I, that was things. that was the problem with the home pod is like it, it's it was just too expensive to then practical yeah and this is actually could be practical because it's a competitive price and if you wanted to do the stereo thing it was only 200 bucks you're not spending like 800 bucks for what for two home pods now you have 200 bucks so you could do your stereo speaker system yeah all right no they're good good job on them this, they should have just launched this one first i know or al- yeah alongside it all right let's move on to the bgh1 panasonic released a z cam I think we have Basically. to call this, th- this design the Z-Cam design. They, it feels like they coined it, right? Uh, I mean, I don't know if they completely coined it, but they've definitely taken it to what everyone actually wants for, like, a little cine cam. Yeah, that's what it is. A little baby cine cam with a bunch of quarter 12s on it and yeah, that's um, it. a record it's button. A, dude, this is the Blackmagic Studio cam. Yeah. Do you remember the Blackmagic Studio cam that's just the square and it's got, like, four quarter 20s on every side? Yep. I mean, it's got a quarter twenty on every side, so four. Yeah, like, this one has. That's uh, what this is, but three. instead, it's a GH five S. Yep, GH five S. So that comes with it—the amazing image quality, but also all the downsides of it, and then the micro four thirds mount. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a GH five S without a screen and a smallest possible package. It made more sense now that I've finally seen it, because Wayne and I, we were, we were talking about. Uh, why didn't they just make this full frame but now actually seeing it okay i get it and the biggest reason why dude this thing is 
it's it's tiny yeah it's like it's a tiny little this is this is the size that you would expect of everyone talking about how small micro four thirds is this is like the first even cine cam but just first camera where it's like oh i get yeah micro four thirds is small again yeah so this is going on drones this is the, your webcam your studio webcam this is your multi-cam setup it's pretty cool it's pretty cool. I do think it's still too expensive. What's the exact I, price yeah, on it? It's still 2000 you can also get it. It's GH5S and you can get them cheaper. Yeah, and you, it's also the same price as the full frame S5. And I feel like that offers a the lot. The S5 is better. Yeah, it just offers a lot more. And a screen. Because <laughs> you have to yeah. buy a screen for this, which... I mean, I, I, I get it. It's not for people who want a screen on. You know what I mean? Like, This is a very specific no, is- type of camera. Yeah, like in it, this is this is a studio cam. This this is a Blackmagic studio. Yeah, like this is that's literally what this is meant to compete with, is tethering like four of those together over Ethernet and going ham. You know what I mean? Which is awesome. And that's like, kind of cool. It is yeah. cool. It is awesome. I probably wouldn't get it just just for the price, but I'm not really in I that mean, market. I would I would, I would, I would price, if I was also, in that market. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I don't I don't need a, a studio cam in this sense, right? For for productions, and then even if I did, I would still sit there just being like, yeah, but I could just buy a GH five S. Yeah. Or the S five, or the S five go full frame, go the S five. I mean, you have yeah, like but like two... even even specifically for this, like the studio setup, like the 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 GH five S works fantastic for that but it's an easier way of it's so this has the bigger battery on it but it's still just easier to like buy a gh5s stick a dummy battery in it and you can link three of them together and you're you're done you know what i mean yeah yeah ethernet With, power over ethernet it's got gen lock um it's got 422 10 bit up to 30 frames 420 10 bit up to 60 frames 4k dci and that's it that's I mean that's what you get it's a little fucking oh, the cool, cine baby. The cooler thing, though, since it is a cine cam, they really amped up the shutter read. Yeah, I saw and that. And there's no mechanical shutter. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah. It's not a global shutter, but like... It's pretty close. It looks pretty it's, close. It's close, yeah. So that that's cool. I can see people having some really cool uses for it. And I actually, like... This ended up way cooler than I actually thought it would. Yeah. For it just being a box GH5S, and it's literally it's just it's because of the fucking size, dude. Yeah, I can see this being like action style camera on drones, fucking whipping around. Oh hell yeah, dude! And that's pretty much it, or like a multicam studio setup where you just want to control it from OBS and run it yeah. that way. Like for for most most things, I would that this isn't going to be the camera I reach for, but as like a specialized tool, it, it's it's kind of compelling yeah like especially for just the small stuff like that's cool the, the, the thing about this though is like if you wanted to rig it up i wouldn't because I, I i was originally thinking this is just going to be a zcam competitor and i'm coming away from it feeling like this isn't even though it kind of is well that's kind of why i wasn't really like that's why i wasn't really sold on the zcam was because it's like it, it's it's this type of use case, you know. It's it's either the multicam, it's the the studio or the um, the action cam style, the drone cam. And I was just like, I don't know if I have too much of a use case for that because you're gonna have to rig it up if you want to use it, and then you're at a different type of yeah. thing. You're at a different pricing where there's different. You, cameras. No, you are, but I th- I think that the argument with the Z cam is it's just easy for me. It's easier to rig up. And, you know, it's like the red style of just having a brain where it is, it's an easier way of rigging it up to be what you want, where this is more specialized and it's literally just because of the size. Like I, to, to make this like a usable cine cam, you would have to add quite a bit and this thing's tiny, dude. Yeah. Let's see how big the Z cam is. The Z cam, by the way, for the 6K is 4,000. Uh, but well, that's I, for the full frame. This one's meant yeah. to compete against the OG E2, which is to the same price. Yeah, but I want to see the size. I don't know how much 
bigger or smaller it is. Oh, the Z cam is noticeably bigger. Is it? Yeah. The Z the Z cam's no like probably three times bigger than this thing. It's about four by four. I mean, at least that's what I like, this I don't may know be the like exact an inch sizing, smaller. But like, just be, just based off of the things I've seen of it, like. Let's see if they have a size in here. Um, let me see. No, it's not going to show. Oh, I don't know if it's going to show me on here. Sensor, weight, input, output. No, I just want to know actual size. Oh, well. It's not going to show me here. Ooh, look at all these bit rates. All intra 10. Oh, man. Yeah, welcome to Pana, dude. Shoots ProRes. That's why I want. Oh, no, that's why I wanted that swab to have good autofocus because, like, well, yeah, that's, that's the problem. That, like, Pana, Pana, Pana does you right when it comes to features. Yeah, this is this uh, autofocus. I mean, uh, I guess according to Panasonic, they say it's uh, three point six by three point six by three inch. This is a little bit smaller. It's a, it's a it's, it just smaller. looks so much smaller in comparison. Like when you see like someone like Kai hold the Z cam and then you see Jordan hold this, like this looks baby compared to the Z cam. V log, yep. And it does have it has a full HDMI on it, it has full SDI. Like it this is a kind of cool breakable cam. I just yeah. I just want I just want to I want someone to make this with autofocus. That's all I want. <laughs> yeah, no one does. Not one camera company does. Or like phase detection autofocus. Let me put it that way. Yeah. So think I think for a lot of things you can get away with pan autofocus. It's just not if I had to make if I had if I only had one chance to make that shot, I would not be using pan autofocus. No. No, no, no. I would just switch it to manual. I mean, just looking at the promos of it, it's been in and out of autofocus when they were using it. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't good. Just got to keep it on manual. <clears throat> but this is not really for the autofocus, you know what I mean? Like, this is, this is a very specific use case uh, it's a little baby it's a little baby studio cine cam like hell yeah stick some good glass on it and manual focus it anyway i, I really want to see some people's builds of this i want to see i want to see if it's popular too because i do like this idea now am i more sold on like the black magic just slap a screen on it on the back yeah just because that's one less thing you have to buy nonetheless and uh, black Mag magic also does everything like just way cheaper and that's kind of where I was just like, eh, at this price, the Black Magic still sounds a little bit better of an offering. But we're getting to the world where the where the box mod is starting to become a real. I mean, this if you, it, I'd argue the Canon is somewhat similar. You know, it's somewhat the box mod style. It's sort of just it's like get, a, it's getting closer. Yeah, I just still just this is still the dream. Just yeah, just give me a fucking box with quarter twenties all over it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it, it ended up being a, a lot cooler than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I mean, because... I, I don't know. And it's not it's not to say, like, to rip on Pana. It's just everything I heard about it was like, okay, it's a GH5S, which is a great camera. It's just not exciting in 2020 or almost 2021. And this ended up being a lot more exciting than I expected. Yeah, this was more like, no, you know what? I could actually see this being useful in many situations that I would use, I, I wouldn't actually go out and do it, but I could actually see it fitting in and like, and this, oh, this type of setup, the, this type of setup would be perfect for that, you know? Yeah, no, it, that, that sensor, it's not, it's not like the, I, I don't know if I, I don't think I would buy this as a cine cam. That's the hard part is just because that sensor is not a, it's not a dynamic range beast. It's just, and it's also so detailed, you know what I mean? It's so, yeah. it's got such a digital no, well, detail yeah. to that's it. The that's the, that's the, that's the trade-off. Like you, you do lose dynamic range with this because the, the micro four thirds from Pana, they can only use the V-Log L versus like full V-Log. So you're just, you're losing compared to Pana's full frame, right. unfortunately in that Pana ecosystem. But 
GH5S is not a slouch when it comes to low light. So if you wanted to stick this and do some really cool like low light stuff or action shots where you had to be running and gunning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to drop yeah. this onto fucking like a big ass drone and just whip it around. Or just a gimbal and just gimbal it all the time. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's well, pretty and cool. the other thing too, it's light. It's light as shit. It's yeah. It's how much is it weigh? Almost as light as my XT30. Yeah, it's five hundred eighty grams. It's lighter <laughs> than the new Fuji. Yeah, five hundred eighty. No, grams. it's still heavier. Um, like yeah, no, that's still pretty light though. But it's kind of cool. I want to see a full frame version of it now. But yeah, like that, I wonder if that would ever be a hell yeah, a dude. Dream. Like I, 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 I just want, I want more, more just pure box cams, dude. Yeah, give them the box mod. Well, yeah. we also know where Panasonic is starting to go. They're definitely starting to cater towards like we're a video company. You know what I mean? Like, there's always been this sort of like weird hybridness about their cameras, but it like this release is like okay, we're gonna really start going towards the cinema market with the cinema niche guys that want the box mods and the fucking, you know what I mean? Like. I think I mean, that's a good been, move. Yeah, for they've them. been edging there because, like, the S, the I think S1H, it's a good move SH1, however you pronounce it, I always forget. That's a fantastic camera. They went out of their way to get it Netflix approved. But I mean, they're, they're still Panavision. Like, they still do make some pretty good cine cams. Mm-hmm. Like, so, hell yeah. I would say it is. Yeah, I don't entirely know what Pan is doing, but I, I don't hate it. No, the, the issue is Pana also has a, they have a new Pana Cinecam coming out, but it's, it's kind of just a rebranded Bread Monstro. It's just a, a bad thing. It's just, I, I, it just confuses me of what, what, what is Pana's vision here and what is their goal? Yeah, I think, I think this like just super niche cinema market <clears throat> that's just heading that way lean into it stop with the photo you don't need to do photo people well, are buying no, i don't cameras. think they're gonna stop doing photo because there is a they're not bad at it basically like like for stills that's where contract detection's better arguably just because it's more it it's it's slower but it's more accurate basically. but i'm wondering how many people are buying panasonic for photo you know what i mean there's a group i know that yeah, I do. I think yeah, I agree that no, they should be going hard on cinema stuff. That's why they. That's why they were making all their L glass with the clutch on it and stuff. Yeah, exactly. But uh, there's still there's still a group out there who just, con- I mean, contract detection is technically like when you break it down, it technically is more accurate. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, all right, that's it. That's the show. Fun releases, so many things to buy. We have new consoles, we have new phones, we have new graphics cards, new CPUs, new cameras. And, and I mean, there's a any new Fuji <laughs> out in like two anything. days and a new Nikon, two new Nikons tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to have to do a no mirror very soon, so be on the lookout for that. We'll probably still talk about the BGH1 in that. Lots of stuff coming, man. Just stay tuned. Thank you all for listening. We'll catch you guys later. Hopefully, let's see what the Titans are doing. Let's see real quick. Titans Bills. Let's see what the score is. Oh, Titan Titans are taking the Bills. 14-10. Doobie's happy. All right, everyone. We'll catch you guys later. Peace.